Okay, examples, examples, examples. That's what these next couple of videos are going to be all about. I'm going to do a bunch of those inclined plane things. I'm going to do one or two of the uh, the the ropes kind of holding up some kind of mass. I'm going to do a bunch of that crap because uh, that's the stuff that's going to be on the test, and I know it's bothering a lot of people because they're not really understanding. Like, maybe they can do it, maybe they can't do it, maybe they, their numbers come close. I don't know. I just want to help you all out. Uh, okay. So, I'm actually just going to basically, hmm, let's see, how can I do this? I'm going to, I wonder if I can copy and paste. Will that work? Copy. Paste. Make it bigger. Paste. Not enough room to paste the text. Make, make, I'm going to make the font smaller. We don't need a huge font. Let's make it 14. There. Hey, that worked out well. Okay. I'm just going to put this over here in this corner. Uh, up in this corner, I think. Okay, a 3.0 meter long board has one end raised to a height of 60 centimeters to form an incline. A 4 kilogram mass is allowed to slide without friction down the entire length of the incline plane. So this is could f would be a good example of um, our, our our ramps that we did the sliders on because it's frictionless and it's down an incline. Uh, what's the final speed when it reaches the bottom, meaning final velocity vs? And if the mass is replaced with an 8.0 kilogram mass, what would be the new speed when it reaches the bottom? Okay, so first we're going to do A, obviously, but even before that, we're going to draw a diagram. So we're going to make a 3.0 meter long board. So we're going to say that this is 3. Um, it has one end raised to a height of 60 centimeters um, to form an incline. So 60 centimeters, how many meters is that? That's, I think, 0 0.06, I hope. It's not 0.6, right? It's 0 0.06. That's this is one thing that I'm terrible at. 60 centimeters would be te uh, six decimeters. Oh no, okay, so it's 0 0.6 meters. You can check me on that. I might be wrong. If I am, that'll be a bummer because I'm going to base my the entire equation off of this. But I think I'm I'm right. I think. Not sure, but I think so. And I uh, my brain's just dead right now. Okay, so uh, let's just complete the triangle just for sake of ease because we know that we're going to end up uh, wanting it eventually. Ah, uh, come on. Complete the triangle. Yay, you got a little taper down there. Whatever. Okay, a 4 kilogram mass. So that's going to be, let's say, a box. Uh, this thing is sliding down. Uh, the inclined plane. We want to know what's the final velocity here. So before we even do that, what we want to do is find out what's the acceleration. Okay, well let's just break everything down, and I'm going to even solve for some things that I don't necessarily need to solve for. Okay, this is going to be our force of gravity, right? Because it's how much gravity is pulling down the box, that's why it's straight down. So that's going to be equal to, well, it's always 9.8 whenever we're working with gravity, that's our acceleration, times the mass. And the mass, they said, is 4.0. Right? Uh, and I'm also going to go in, go ahead, just go ahead and say, go ahead, take out our hand dandy calculator, 9.8 times 4 equals, okay, so we got 39.2. Um, that equals 39. I'm just going to make it 39. No, I'm not. I'm going to make it 39.2. Just uh, keep it a little bit accurate. Lots of decimals. To confuse things, no, not really. because It's because I want you to get used to seeing the decimals and I don't want them to scare you anymore. Or even if they ever did. Uh, what part of that is in the x direction? Well, let's see. We can kind of draw these in. And right, we know that since this angle right here is perpendicular and this one's parallel, both with respect to this triangle, these two are similar triangles. This triangle and this triangle are all similar triangles. So 
So this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. And uh, we don't know this angle, actually. So this puts an interesting twist. Um, but we do know... Hmm. Oh, okay. This is uh, kind of interesting. There's a little side problem we're going to do here. We have to solve to find the angle. Right? Okay, so... We have 0.6... 0.6, 3, and x, right? We know that that whole 0.6 squared plus x squared equals 3 squared. Sorry, that's ugly. Um, and so we can say that it's also the same as 3 squared minus... Uh, this 0.6 squared, and then if we get rid of this uh, this x squared, if we I mean if we get rid of the squared, then that means that we have to take the square root of all that. Square root. That's really ugly. But uh, we got 3 squared minus 0.6 squared equals 8.64, and then we're going to so 8.64, remember that. We're going to take 8.64 and take the square root of that. I hate how there's no square root button on the scientific version of this. And we end up with um, 2.94. So 2.94. So with that, we can say, okay, well, what's the slope of this line? Well, as it turns out, it, uh, it happens to be 0.6. And for now, we're going to ignore the direction. 0.6 over 2.94, right? Because think about it. Rise, right here. Run, right? That should make sense. Um, so what, how do we get the angle? Well, that's what we have inverse tangent for. We plug in a slope. That's ugly. Uh, we plug in a slope, which is going to be our 0.6 divided by... 2.94 equals... Ah, crap, I have to do this in scientific. Uh, okay, so we plug in a slope, which is going to be equal to our 0 0.6 divided by the 2.94, right? And then we're going to take that number and take the inverse tangent of that, and the inverse tangent gives us an angle, which the angle is 11.5. So this is 11.5. That's how many degrees that is. So that kind of gave us a little side problem that we had to solve, right? Okay, so now let's continue. Um, the force of gravity in the x direction is going to be equal to... Well, let's see. If this is also an 11.5 degree angle, because we were saying that these triangles are similar, then that means that this... This is kind of like what the length would be, and this is kind of like the height. You have to kind of turn your head, but if you want to make this along the our imaginary x-axis for the example, I mean, it's not going to be for the whole problem, but this is kind of like the length, and this is the height. Or rather, um, this is opposite, this is adjacent, so the force in the x-direction is going to be uh, this right here, the opposite. So opposite over hypotenuse, is the cosine of this 11.5, or the opposite, you could say, is just equal to the hypotenuse times that cosine, which the hypotenuse is the force of gravity. So it's 39.2 times that cosine, that uh, this bit right here is equal to the 39.2 times whatever that cosine is, times cosine of 11.5. Right? And then, very similarly, we can say that the force of g in the y direction... I am sorry, I lied to you. I lied, I lied, I lied. This is not cosine. We remember we're finding opposite over hypotenuse. So, oops. Opposite over hypotenuse. That's sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here I actually want to put in... 
Okay. Uh, move that up. Yeah, that's better, right? Hopefully. Okay, so it's 3.92 times sine of that. And then, likewise, the force of gravity acting in the y direction is going to be equal to, okay, the overall force of gravity, right? 39.2 times whatever part of it is in the x direction, or whatever ratio of it is in the x direction. So that's cosine of 11.5. Because you think that's just alternate over uh, the hypotenuse. And if you just have, if you just want to get the alternate, you multiply the hy by the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse, and then this is the cosine. Another way that you could look at this is you could say, okay, if this is 11.5, then I know that this is uh, whatever 90 minus 11.5 is. It's 88.5. That's just using your basic uh, triangle knowledge that they add up to 180. And then you could say, okay, like we were learning before, x is just the cosine of that 88.5, and then the y component is just the sine of that 88.5. Notice that it's very similar. Sine of 11.5, meaning this opposite here of, of this angle, is equal to cosine, or th rather this opposite over this hypotenuse is equal to the cosine, this adjacent over this hypotenuse of this angle. So it's 90 minus this. So that might help you to visualize it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, crap, I'm running out of time. I'm probably going to have to finish this in another video. But, uh, then you can say, okay, the force of gravity of X is... Oh, wrong button. We get, uh, 39.2 times our... Ah, crap. Times 11.5, the sine of that, so, we already typed in 39.2 times this sign right here is equal to 77.81. So that's its x the, in the x direction. Remember, our x direction is here. That's our x. So we got, what, 7.81 equals 7.81. Um, okay, so that's how, that's the force in this direction. And remember, uh, force equals mass times acceleration, right? So that means that if we want to find the acceleration, acceleration is just the force divided by the mass, and in this case the force is 7.81 divided by the mass, which is, uh, 4, they said, right here, the 4. So then we just get that divided by 4 equals about 1.95. That's its acceleration. And now if it's 3 meters, well, hey, guess what? We go back to those stupid kinematics equations. Um, so let's see, we want one of the ones that says delta x. Or no, actually, no, okay. So we're going to use the vf squared equals vi squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Vs squared equals Vi squared plus 2ax, right? Because we know the initial, we know that the final, we want to know the final velocity. We know that the initial velocity is zero, right? Because it's starting from rest. And then we have the acceleration and the distance that it's traveling, that length of that. So you plug in a couple numbers here, you end up getting uh, two times the acceleration, which we got here, 1.95 times the distance that is traveling, that's, that's 3, uh, times 3 equals 11.7. And then that's equal to vf squared, so you just take the square root of that, which is the same as the power of 0.5, that's just what I'm doing on the calculator. You take the square root of that, and you get 342. Um, that is the final velocity, 340, uh, 3.42 meters per second. I'm pretty much out of time. I might get cut off by YouTube. I hope I don't. But, um... In the next video, I'm just going to do, probably do another example problem. I'll see you then.